In this video, we're going to cover how to set up the Zoom F6 for multi-track audio recordings, choosing the correct audio format before you press record, how the microphone cables are connected, and how everything is routed. And then we're going to learn how to enter in our metadata so that our recorded files are organized for the post-production team. Links to the gear in this video can be found below. And in case you're new to this channel, hello, my name is Jeffrey Hack and I'm a production sound mixer based in Phoenix, Arizona. And I've used the Zoom F6 mixer for many projects over the years. At a first glance of the Zoom F6, you'll notice that there are three different audio inputs on each side. And the reason this device is called the Zoom F6 is because it's made by Zoom, it's meant for the field, and it has six audio inputs. And these six female audio inputs are what you're going to use to connect your microphone cables to. You also have a stereo output jack for sending your audio's feed to your camera, or you can also send it to another person using an IFB system. We have our headphone jack for monitoring the audio, which is highly important if you want to make sure the audio sounds decent and good. It's not enough to just look at the audio levels, you want to listen to it as well. We also have a timecode jack for internal or external timecode. Timecode is a newly found feature that helps you synchronize the audio from your mixer and the camera using a timecode generated system. I like using Deity's timecode because it's very simple and it works really well with the Sidus Audio app. In the back you have your SD card slot, which SD stands for Secure Digital and is the memory card you use for recording your audio. Now let's look at how to choose the best recording setting. We have the options of recording in 24-bit at 48 kilohertz. We also have 32-bit float, which you don't need any gain staging for that because of how big the dynamic range is. If you do decide to record in 32-bit float, keep in mind that your file sizes are going to be larger than your 24-bit audio recordings. And I don't recommend recording 32-bit audio for super long takes. Let's say takes that are over 30 minutes to an hour long. But 32-bit is recommended for extremely loud takes. You have your mono slash stereo setting. This records your ISO tracks, your individual tracks, into separate folders. You also have the option of recording a poly file. With this setting, you can record all of your audio tracks into one file. That's right multiple audio tracks in one file, which is why it's called a poly recording. These audio files won't be stuck together because you can unlink them in your post-production software. You also have the option to use the left-right fader setting. This pretty much determines how your files are mixed within the recording. Now I could go into more detail about this, but I already have a video explaining a lot of this stuff and you can check it above my head right here. You'll notice that each audio input has a specific dedicated number. Now to organize the way that I record audio, I usually use the boom mic as audio input one, leaving audio input two through six as my wireless lavalier microphones. I do this because it keeps all of my tracks organized. If I'm listening to the audio on set and I'm wondering which track am I recording, I'll know that from my organized process, the boom microphone is audio track one and the lab microphones are audio tracks two through six. Of course, it's still important to remember who specifically has that microphone you're using on which inputs. Now to organize your metadata and make sure the post-production team isn't confused used by any of these audio tracks that may seem out of line or disorganized or whatever the case may be. Here's how we organize the metadata. You can create a new folder name for a new project. So let's say I was to record another topic on the Zoom F6. The folder I have right now would not be the same folder I would use for the other video because I want the folders to match the topics. When you've created your new folder, you'll then want to go into the metadata section. This section will give you the options to either use the date your selected folder or a specific username that you want to identify the um, audio recording as. For YouTube videos like this, I usually assign the metadata by its folder name, just because I can verbally slate everything and know what each take is. However, if you're working with the production crew on a commercial or narrative film, I would highly recommend using the username option so that you can get more specific with the scene and take numbers. Now that you know how to record multi-track audio, check out the left right fader video right next to me. This will explain how the left-right fader setting works and how you can use it to your advantage when recording your next project.